I think all of us can agree that wildfire presents an existential threat to our community, meaning that fire can destroy our entire town within 24 hours with tragic loss of life. How is our town council addressing our wildfire hazard? By erasing it from the map, literally. My name is Bob Tercott. I'm a resident of Portola Valley, and I'm quite alarmed about the gap between where we are with respect to fire safety and where we should be. Stick with me and I'll walk you through the details of just one stunning example. Unfortunately, there are many others. Let's start with a conclusion. Mayor Hughes has directed staff to replace the most accurate fire hazard map we have with one that, in the words of the fire district, is unsafe and inaccurate. He says the discredited map is being used as a placeholder while we wait for a new hazard assessment. Since fire safety policies are based on the category of hazard defined by our official hazard map, in making this change, existing safety policies are eliminated from 83% of Portola Valley's area. This change also misinforms the Department of Housing and Community Development, HCD, telling the state that aside from 6% of Portola Valley's area, we have no fire hazard. HCD will judge our compliance with state housing mandates using this grossly inaccurate characterization of our hazard. What can you do about this? If you're okay ignoring the significant fire hazards that our fire district and our fire safety consultants say exist throughout the entire town, then you can vote to reelect Mayor Hughes. If, on the other hand, you think that pretending our fire hazards don't exist is unacceptable, you think that eliminating fire safety policies from 83% of Portola Valley's area is dangerous, and you think misinforming HCD about our fire hazards will compromise our ability to develop safely, then stick with me to the end or skip forward and I'll give you five simple things you can and should do to help correct this grave mistake. First, some background info. A general plan is mandated by the state of California for towns such as ours. It's composed of a number of elements that address issues such as safety, housing, and environmental quality. It defines priorities and articulates policies and programs. It's a kind of constitution for the town. It provides guardrails for future town councils. The safety element of the general plan was last revised in 2010. At that time, the Mertz map was adopted as the official reference for fire hazard severity in Portola Valley. Fire safety policies were defined for Mertz's high and highest hazard areas, shown in orange and red, respectively, in this color-coded version. For example, policy one of the safety element prohibits construction of buildings for human occupation in Mertz's highest hazard area unless adequate mitigation measures are implemented. This policy applies to the red areas of the Mertz map, 40% of Portola Valley's area. As another example, policy six requires protective measures to prevent the spread of fire in areas of high fire hazard, corresponding to Mertz's high and highest hazard areas the red and orange areas combined, comprising 89% of Portola Valley's area. Why has the Mertz map served as a basis for our fire safety policy since 2010? Because it's the most accurate fire hazard assessment we have, by far. And it's the most accurate because of the rigorous, detailed, high resolution, and ground level methodology used by Mertz. As part of its statewide mapping, CAL FIRE has also provided the fire hazard assessment of Portola Valley but Portola Valley represents less than one one-hundredth of one percent of the area CAL FIRE mapped. CAL FIRE assessed 100 million acres statewide, necessarily using remote imaging and topographic information and very coarse resolution, which effectively averages out the steep ravines of Portola Valley. There was no ground verification. Ray Moritz compared his methodology to CAL FIRE's at the February 1, 2022 Wildfire Preparedness Committee. I encourage you to watch it. In contrast to CAL FIRE's, Moritz's assessment was ground verified, high resolution, and incorporated a number of important topographic parameters that CAL FIRE ignored. The Moritz map continues to be the most accurate fire hazard assessment that we have. In January, Fire Marshal Bullard told the Housing Element Committee that, if anything, the Moritz map understates, not overstates, our hazards. Zeke Ludner, the current fire safety consultant for Portola Valley, described the Mertz map to the Housing Element Committee at the same meeting. He said, it's a good map, but it's 13 years old. If I were to draw red circles on the map, my map would have more red on it. In other words, the Mertz map is the most accurate that we have. 
Its limitation is that it understates, not overstates, our fire hazard. In contrast, the 2008 CAL FIRE map is known to be so grossly inaccurate that it is unsafe. The president of the Woodside Fire Protection District Board of Directors wrote in January, you may recall that the district rejected this map as too limited even back in 2008. It's not a safe and accurate map to approve in 2022 either. As you probably know, our general plan is in the process of being revised and updated. An ad hoc housing element committee of residents has been meeting for over a year to facilitate resident input into the work being done by staff and consultants. After all public reviews by the housing element committee, the planning commission, and the town council, but before submission to the state, a fire hazard map was added to the draft housing element. Not the Meritz map, which has been our official fire hazard map since 2010. Instead, the deeply flawed 2008 CAL FIRE map was submitted as the official map that represents our fire hazards. Last week, the revised draft safety element was made public. Consistent with the change in the fire hazard map in the housing element, our fire safety policies have been reworked so that they're now based on the discredited 2008 CAL FIRE map instead of the hazard categories identified by Moritz. By redefining the hazard categories in this way, safety policies that currently apply to Moritz's highest hazard category will be eliminated from approximately one-third of Portola Valley's area. Safety policies that currently apply to both high and highest hazard categories, as identified by Moritz, will be eliminated from 83% of Portola Valley's area. To be clear, the applicable area is not being reduced for all fire safety policies. It's only the most restrictive policies, those reserved for the most dangerous areas that are being eliminated from large portions of town. Maps matter. It is critical that the town use the most accurate map available to represent our hazards. First, the hazard map serves as the basis for fire safety policies. Safety policies are defined in terms of identified areas of hazard. By replacing the MRITS map with CAL FIRES, the town has removed the most restrictive safety policies from large portions of Portola Valley's most hazardous areas. Second, the hazard map informs residents, the state, and FEMA about Portola Valley's fire hazards. Third, the state of California, through HCD, will judge our compliance with state housing mandates based on the hazards we document. The deeply flawed CAL FIRE map grossly understates our fire hazards and misleads HCD into thinking that 94% of Portola Valley has no fire hazard. So what are the governance issues here? The topic really deserves its own video, but briefly, that such a profound change to our safety element would be implemented by staff and consultants under the direction of the town council and not made public until after submission of the draft housing element to the state represents a form of governance that fails to serve the interests of residents. It also happens to be deeply contrary to Portola Valley's traditional approach. More generally, as with the preparation of the quote, glaringly bad, end quote, hazard mitigation plan before it, residents were effectively excluded from meaningful involvement in the revision of the safety element. Residents have been calling for such involvement for over a year. In March of this year, the chairs of the Wildfire Preparedness Committee Emergency Preparedness Committee and Geologic Safety Committee wrote to the Town Council asking for such involvement. They got no response. I myself, along with two veterans of the Wildfire Preparedness Committee, met with staff seeking to work collaboratively on safety element revisions to no avail. Thank you for your time and consideration. If you think my reasoning is flawed or my conclusions are incorrect, please let me know in the comments section below. Be specific and provide links for supporting material. So are you okay with this profound change in approach to our fire safety? Are you okay with knowingly misrepresenting our fire hazards to the state, to FEMA, and to others? Are you okay having fire safety policies eliminated from 83% of Portola Valley's area? Are you okay with this approach to governance in which these um, significant changes were not made public until after our draft housing element was submitted to the state? If you're okay with all these things, you should vote to re-elect Mayor Hughes. On the other hand, if you're not, there are five simple steps you can take to help correct this. First, like, subscribe, and most importantly, share the link to this video with your friends and neighbors. Second, let the town council know how you feel. Third, vote for candidates who publicly commit to basing our safety policies on the most accurate hazard maps we have, the Mertz map. 
and commit to updating our hazard map when better data become available. Fourth, vote for Lloyd Rusty Day for the Woodside Fire Protection District Board of Directors. After spending two years unsuccessfully lobbying Portola Valley's Town Council to conduct the hazard and risk assessment mandated by state law in 2012, Rusty then petitioned the fire district. The district readily agreed and is now in the process of conducting that work. Had it not been for Rusty's initiative and persistence, the work would not be underway. Finally, add your name to the mailing list to stay abreast of these issues. There's a link to do so below. Thank you again for your time, for your consideration, and for voting.